So speaking of tango dancing and women, <laughs> <laughs> here's uh, he, he again, Otsu is in and out of the book. And at this point, he is heading to a battle and the odds are against him. And Otsu wants to go in with him. And she actually wants to die if he dies. And so he's having a conversation with her. And here we go. Don't be a fool, Otsu. He suddenly blurted. There's no reason why you should die. The strength in his own voice and the depth of his feeling surprised even him. It is one thing for me to die fighting against the Yoshiokas. Not only is it right for a man who lives by the sword to die by the sword, I have a duty to remind those cowards of the way of the samurai. Your willingness to follow me to death is deeply touching, but what good would it do? No more than the pitiful death of an insect. Seeing her burst into tears, he regretted the brutality of his words. Now I understand how over the years I've lied to you, and I've lied to myself. I didn't intend to deceive you when we ran away from the bridge, from the village, or when I saw you at Hanada Bridge, but I did by pretending to be cold and indifferent. That wasn't the way I really felt. In a little while, I'll be dead. What I'm, trying, what I'm about to say is the truth. I love you, Otsu. I'd throw everything to the four winds and live out my life with you. If only, after a moment's pause, he continued in a more forceful vein. You must believe every word I say because I'll never have another chance to tell you this. I speak with neither pride nor pretense. There have been days when I couldn't concentrate for thinking about you. Nights I couldn't sleep for dreaming of you. Hot, passionate dreams. Otsu, dreams that nearly drove me mad. Often I've hugged my palate, pretending it was you. But even when I felt like that, if I took out my sword and looked at it, the madness evaporated and my blood cooled. Her face turned toward him, tearful but as radiant as the morning glory. She started to speak. Seeing the fervor in his eyes, her words caught in her throat and she looked again at the ground. The sword is my refuge. Anytime my passion threatens to overcome me, I force myself back into the world of swordsmanship. This is my fate, Otsu. I'm torn between love and self-discipline. I seem to be traveling on two paths at once, yet when the paths diverge, I invariably manage to keep myself on the right one. I know myself better than anyone does. I'm neither a genius nor a great man. He became silent again. Despite his desires to express his feelings honestly, his words seemed to be concealing the truth. His heart told him to be even more candid. That's the kind of man I am. What else can I say? I think of my sword and you disappear into some dark corner of my mind. No, disappear altogether, leaving no trace. At times like that, I'm happiest and most satisfied with my life. Do you understand? All this time you've suffered, you've risked your body and soul on a man who loves his sword more than he loves you. I'll die to vindicate my sword, but I wouldn't die for the love of a woman. Not even you. As so much as I'd like to fall on my knees and beg forgiveness, I can't. Yeah. Another speech. Yeah. Another scene that... Most women would rather not go through. Yeah. And it's another, I, I, I again, I know I don't re relate to every normal person at all in very little ways, but <laughs> like when I read that, I'm always like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And, I, and I've been married for 20 years to an awesome woman. And, uh, but yeah, when I hear that, I just think, yeah, that's how you do it. Right. Hey, look, every time I would start thinking about you, I just look at my rifle and be like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> 